Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. I've just finished setting up this Panasonic 55-inch FZ802, also marketed as the FZ800 in the rest of Europe, OLED television from the Japanese brand. And first of all, I would like to say that this is by far the easiest TV that I've actually assembled. As you can see from the unboxing video, there's no need to actually assemble the stand itself or lay the panel flat on, let's say, a soft surface before you assemble the stand. It's just a very simple case of actually lifting the TV up and then putting it on the stand. And I wish that more manufacturers would adopt this approach because it will make my life easier and it will make the lives of many people easier as well if they wish to return a television. Not that Panasonic wants you to return this television anytime soon. But what I've done here is to hook up the Panasonic FZ802 to a Panasonic UB900 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player as you can see from the home screen here. And what I'm going to do now is to go through the picture settings in the user menu and see what's new. So if I press the menu button on the remote control, you can see that it brings up the picture menu and the default picture mode is normal. And what I'm going to go through here are the new picture presets that Panasonic has introduced for the year 2018. And the first one is a professional photo mode, which presumably is targeted towards professional photographer who wishes to actually grade their photos or adjust their photos using this OLED monitor. Not that I advise this a lot because of the propensity of OLED panel for screen burn if you display static images on screen for prolonged periods. But the picture preset is there and again when I do the review I'll try and go through these picture presets and see which ones are usable. And then cinema mode, THX cinema mode, THX bright room, true cinema, custom, professional one, professional two. And there are two further new picture presets that the Japanese company has introduced for 2018. And those are the sports mode and the game mode. Let's start with sports mode. And I think the reason they have actually introduced this is because of the 2018 World Cup and I will need to go through the picture settings to see what they actually look like but at first glance the sports mode looks too blue and too vivid and if you go through into the picture settings you can see that the advanced settings are grayed out which means that you can't actually adjust the white balance controls or the color management system or the gamma control so you can't actually calibrate this mode you can only probably select a different color temperature preset which makes it probably not very usable in my opinion because even though sports content have a slightly different demand from traditional movie content in terms of their motion but from a color temperature or color standard point of view all SDR content should be mastered to the same standard so let's say 1080p high definition standard dynamic range content, let's say a sports broadcast should be mastered to the same standards as a 24 frames per second movie. So that means a D65 white point, a BT1886 gamma and also Rec 709 colors. And there is no need for a separate sports mode, but I can understand why Panasonic has implemented it. And if we go into the user menu again and we go to the last mode here, which is the game mode. Again, I think uh, Panasonic is wanting to introduce this mode for a specific reason, which is that I'll go into that later. But on previous Panasonic TVs, you can actually enable game mode inside any of the other picture modes. But for 2018, Panasonic has seen fit to implement a separate game mode for one particular reason, and I'll go into that reason later. Again, with this game mode, I think what is important to note is that the advanced settings are greater as well. So you can't, in theory, calibrate this game mode in an accurate manner the way you can calibrate one of the, say, professional to professional one modes, true cinema modes or the cinema modes. Okay, so those are the picture presets and I'll go into the cinema mode and go through the different picture settings and try and explain them very quickly and note what's new. Luminous level, 
is equivalent to let's say the OLED light on LG televisions or backlight on Samsung televisions it just determines the light output contrast dictates the digital white level so if you set it too high it may actually introduce color clipping or even white clipping or whiter than white clipping if you set it too low then the dynamic range of the image will be reduced brightness affects the digital black level if you set it too high then you'll be exposing the shadow detail unnecessarily or even elevating the black level without actually seeing any increase in shadow detail but if you actually set it too low then the shadow detail may be crushed Color control affects the colors globally, so it increases the saturation and luminance for all the colors. Tint rotates the secondary color hue, so you can actually use this, let's say, to adjust yellow to be slightly greenish, but again, I don't really advise you doing this unless you know what you're actually doing, because this again affects all the colors. Sharpness control is edge enhancement, so this tries to detect high frequency areas and then apply edge enhancement to make it look sharper, but it is an artificial sharpness, so I don't really advise that you go too high on this. Color temperature is a white balance preset, and you can see that there are various settings here. Cool 2, cool 1, normal, warm 1, warm 2, and warm 3. And it will range from a bluer color temperature at the top to a warmer or yellower color temperature at the bottom. Vivid color, again, this setting probably just boosts the color saturation and luminance and for us professional calibrators or any video enthusiasts who value image accuracy, this should be turned off. Color remaster, minimum. Reversal film effect, grayed out. Ambient light sensor. This adjusts the picture settings depending on the ambient light that is detected in the room. HDR brightness setting. Oh, this is quite interesting. This is grayed out at the moment because I'm not sending a HDR signal to the television. But if you send a HDR signal to the television, from what I've actually looked at when I was actually calibrating the 65-inch FZ802 in preparation for our annual TV shootout, there's a control in there called HDR Auto Brightness, I believe. And that is probably Panasonic's dynamic scene optimizer, similar to the dynamic tone mapping on LG's 2017 and 2018 OLEDs. And again, I will need to test this thoroughly during my review. Noise reduction, it tries to reduce the amount of digital noise in the picture, but it can also erase fine detail. Impact remaster, it deals with compression artifacts such as mosquito noise. And Resolution Remaster, Dynamic Range Remaster, there are lots of controls here and for the purpose of image fidelity, it's probably best to switch most of these off. Intelligent Frame Creation, this is Panasonic's Motion Compensated Frame Interpolation and there are three presets, Minimum, Mid and Max and also you can go into the custom settings and adjust these independently in terms of the blur reduction and film smooth and if i just go back and if we go into advanced settings this is where i spend the most time because i'm a professional calibrator i calibrate many panasonic televisions and if we go into the white balance controls here this is the two point white balance control system there are six controls here r gain stands for red gain green gain blue gain red cut off green cut off and blue cut off the gain controls affect the brighter portion of the grayscale whereas the cutoff control affects the darker portion of the grayscale. And if you go into more detailed adjustments, Panasonic has also provided us with more finesse in terms of your grayscale calibration, in that you can adjust not only each 10% interval, and this in the old days would be known as a 10-point white balance system, but also new for 2018. The company wanted to introduce more granularity, wanted to allow more finesse near black. So there are two additional controls of 2.5 IRE. IRE stands for Institute of Radio Engineers. I think it is a slightly antiquated term because it is meant for the analog days. These days, we use a percentage of video stimulus to actually address digital video signal level, but there are the 2.5 IRE and the 5% IRE to address near black grayscale in this case. And if we go out of here and go into the color management system, 
Panasonic has also allowed us to calibrate the three primary colors of red, green, and blue. So R stands for red, G stands for green, and B stands for blue. More detailed adjustments and the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow, C, M, Y. And under each color, there are three further parameters we can adjust, which are the hue, saturation, and luminance. And using these controls, we can achieve the most accurate colors that film creators, content creators would like us to see that you know they have actually been looking at on their calibrated broadcast mastering monitor. And if we go into the gamma controls here, there you can select different gamma presets ranging from 2.6, 2.5 to 1.8. I'm not entirely sure why BT1886 is not here, but you know again I'll need to do more testing when I actually manage to spend some time with the television because I've just basically unboxed this. And you can also adjust the gamma in a more precise manner using the 10-point gamma system. In fact, it's 12-point this year because of the additional 2.5 and 5 IRE controls that Panasonic has implemented on their 2018 sets to again provide more granularity, to provide more precision near black because I think some of these Panasonic OLEDs have been used as client reference monitor in mastering studios and I think one of the biggest complaints is the lack of granularity near black. So new for this year, Panasonic has introduced these controls again to appeal to the professionals who are working in studios but also it will appeal to video enthusiasts like yourselves who value video accuracy. So that is the gamma control and if we go into option settings, that's game mode again as I explained earlier, inside every picture mode you can enable game mode in it. Film cadence mode is grayed out now because the signal sent through here is progressive from the Panasonic EUB900 but if you send an interlace signal this won't be grayed out and you can activate it or deactivate the film mode the interlacing. Black frame insertion, this is interesting because black frame insertion is seen as the holy grail of motion for sample and hole displays. And on the 2017 OLEDs, Panasonic actually used to call this clear motion and it is actually not under the option settings, at least on the UK set. It is actually under the intelligent frame creation settings, but for 2018 they have actually moved clear motion to the option settings submenu and label it clearly as black frame insertion because this is a term that appeals to people like yourself and, and people like me as well. So black frame insertion you can turn it on or off and if you turn it on presumably you can see that the picture becomes darker and depending on my camera frame rate setting you may see more flicker Again, I'll turn it off and unfortunately these are the side effects of black frame insertion because what black frame insertion tries to do is to insert black frames in between the original frames to mimic the impulse type motion that plasmas and CRTs are capable of to clear our retinal persistence and create the perception of a clearer motion with less motion blurring. And 1080p Pure Direct is grayed out now because I'm sending a 4K signal from the UB900 to the television. 4K Pure Direct is activated as a result and this actually enables 444 Chroma. But by enabling 444 Chroma, sometimes you may actually disable other processing. And if you go into 1080p pixel by 4 pixels, this is grayed out now because the signal coming through to the television is not 1080p. But if it is 1080p, then this will revert to a more simple doubling scaling process. HDMI content type, there are just so many options here that sometimes it even boggles my mind. But if we go through it, auto usually is correct. And then you can select graphics photo, uh, HDMI EOTF type. Now this is maybe useful for professional calibrators like myself if I wanted to quickly check uh, HDR output from the television without needing a HDR source. So I can actually force the traditional gamma curve, which is BT1886 for SDR, HLG, which is hybrid log gamma, the broadcast friendly HDR standard that is going to be used by the BBC to broadcast some of the World Cup matches 
on the BBC iPlayer in 4K HDR, and PQ, which is perceptual quantization, the ST2084 Open HDR10 format. So if we set to auto, it should be correct. And then you can set these individually for the different ports as well. Colorimetry type. Again, this allows me to check the color gamut rendition of different formats without needing to actually feed the format through to the television. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. I'm just going through this very fast here. Rec 601 for standard definition, Rec 709 for high definition, and Rec 2020 for ultra high definition. And notice that there is no DCI here because let's say Ultra HD Blu-ray, the signaling is done using Red 2020, even though they may be mastered to DCI, the DCI needs to be put into a Red 2020 container, and this is the most correct way, technically correct way to implement it, and full salute to Panasonic engineers for you know sticking to the technically correct signaling. And if I go back to auto, RGB range, this is normal and full, and normal is for video, full is for PC 0 to 255 levels, and YCBCR range, again you can set this to either YCBCR or RGB standards, and if we leave it to normal, and if we go to screen settings, this Right, this dictates overscan, aspect ratio, pixel orbiter basically just shifts the pixel very slightly on screen to combat image retention and screen burn. Panel maintenance, uh, if you go into here, you can manually start a compensation cycle on this Panasonic 55 inch FZ802B or FZ800 OLED television. and. If we go into, right, this is quite interesting, picture button setting. Remember what I said earlier about the game mode, why I have actually Panasonic introduced a separate game mode picture preset. And the reason is this, because they have actually introduced a new picture button setting on these 2018 OLEDs, that if you actually press the picture button on the remote control, I don't know whether you can actually see it from the camera lens, which is slightly far away. But there's a new picture setting button, and when you press this, what you'll do is that you'll just go through, let's say if I actually press the picture button, it will just toggle through the different picture presets that you have pre-selected. Let's say if we are actually currently in cinema, and if we go to picture button setting, and we, let's say, we have no need for dynamic mode, we have no need for normal mode, and we have need for true cinema mode, sports mode and maybe game mode. So what we would do is, let's say if you set up the true cinema mode for HDR and game mode for playing games, you can just toggle through directly to the game mode using the picture button without having to navigate through to the user menu, which may be quite convoluted. And my only bugbear about the dedicated game mode setting is the lack of accuracy, so you can't actually calibrate it to as accurate a level as, let's say, the professional modes. But I think for gaming, I don't know how much importance you place on video accuracy, and it's just one of those things that you know I may be just nitpicking because I'm a professional calibrator and I want everything to look as accurate as possible. So those are the settings that are available in the picture menu on the Panasonic 55FZ802B, which is the UK version. I'll be spending the next couple of weeks testing this television. By the time you have seen this video, I would have actually done a lot of preliminary testing on the 65-inch FZ802B that I'm actually calibrating and testing for the shootout, our upcoming annual TV shootout that I'm doing in conjunction with Crampton and more so the review video may upload sooner rather than later. But yes, if you have any questions about this television, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if there's anything you want to ask, again, just ask away in the comment section. I can't promise that I will answer them because I'm sometimes a bit busy, to say the least. But yes, I'll be spending the next couple of weeks reviewing this television. And if you have found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.